Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about my first 90 days in tech and what you can expect, but also how to deal with it. I think that this is a really valuable video for somebody who is at the stage that they are applying to jobs. They may be almost finished a certification in IT like CCNA or Network Plus or Security Plus and maybe they are starting to think now this is a real possibility of me actually getting an interview and getting a job. So you're either just starting or you're close to getting accepted. So let's talk about first 90 days in tech. Firstly, I have a new office. Like I've moved house since my last videos. Got a room that's incredibly echoey, um, but we'll make do. I have got windows though, so I'm very happy. We'll talk a bit about what I'm up to and stuff like that. But for those of you who don't know, I'm an IT technician, um, a networking systems technician. I got into tech in Australia here in 2025. So I feel like this is all quite current. I've gone through this sort of stuff. I do have some previous technical experience, but that was a few years ago. So your first 90 days in tech, let's talk about it. I'll try and combine my experience with also what it might be like for you. So rather than just talking about what it was like for me, I do a bit of both. Um, first 90 days in. Let's say you've got a certification or if you were like me, you hadn't got it, but you were studying it and you were very close to getting it. You kind of just need to survive your first 90 days, I would say. A lot of the first 90 days is just surviving. It's just finding out where things are. It's easy, though, to put yourself under the pressure of thinking, oh, how good is the rest of the team? Am I going to look stupid? Uh, you know, you might have an, an overwhelming anxiety of being made to look and feel stupid. Firstly, that should never happen to anybody. It does. Like, when you go to places, it, it just does. Because, you know, maybe there isn't the right people there to support you. But you shouldn't feel like that. You shouldn't feel bad for not knowing certain things about where things are and the place that you've just turned up to. I would say one of the first things and the most important things to do is to forget about tech and actually just come across as a good person. That is number one. You need to come across as somebody who is approachable, who is likable, who is relaxed, but at the same time, you know, you're there to learn, you're there to learn the ropes, you accept and acknowledge there's people there who have been there longer and have more knowledge than you. So it's much more of a people person thing, I think, in the first 90 days before you can start to really demonstrate what you've got in terms of tech skills and you know what you've got to offer. Learn like the space you're working in first before you can apply what you've got. There are a few other ways that I think it can go for people when they're starting their first 90 days in tech, and that is it can be incredibly humbled because you might you may um, be learning something like the CCNA um, or another certification, but you may be presented with a, an issue that is actually extremely lower down than CCNA, but you might not know how to do it. So it could be anything. Look, if I if I look at myself, uh, I had been doing CCNA for like five months. I'd done a CCST before that. So switching and routing was my thing. Like I was very, very interested and hot on routing protocols, layer two stuff, you know, all that space, ports, Ethernet. Um but when you're presented with an issue for an end user, when there's an issue with Windows or, you know, maybe an issue with the internals of a PC, those aren't networking. But you might still find that you have to deal with that. So although we may all be on this network engineering journey, you will find yourselves, I think, potentially when you're starting out in the trenches, 
dealing with layer one issues, user issues, email issues, like I said, Windows, all that sort of stuff. Um, and that's obviously not taught in networking certifications because it's not really networking. However, there is sometimes the there is sometimes scope for you to feel a little bit humbled and silly because you should be able to fix that. That's a really basic issue. And a lot of the time, you will be able to. It's just that you may not have had to do this simple thing time and time again. So it just might not be like second nature as it might be to someone else. Don't let stuff like that put you off. Don't let stuff like that, you know, create that imposter syndrome. If you're like me, dedicated on becoming a network engineer, you know that your skills are in thinking about the bigger picture of networking, where things are in that picture, and also working your way through a systematic framework for when things go wrong. So I'm not too bothered about needing to be shown or not being as quick off the mark with user N issues. I am extremely okay with this sort of stuff, but I just know I'm strong, much more stronger in networking and stuff like that than active directory, group policies, and all that sort of stuff. So just survive. I would also say um, the people skills thing is really important. Uh, presentation of how you are turning up to work and how you, you know, present yourself as first impressions. It's, you know, it's basic stuff. And then what I would also do is look at your team, okay? Look at the strengths in your team. Now, you'll rapidly get to know your team well. You know, you, you'll be with them every day. So see where the strengths are but maybe see where the weaknesses are within the team and see where you could potentially add some benefit. Say the team is all over Windows, like Windows is the thing, everyone runs on Windows. Maybe there's not a Linux guy there. Why don't you start to learn Linux? Start to learn Linux server, learn the file structure. You know, all that could be valuable for when the team has an, a Linux issue because... Linux is everywhere. We just don't realize it because we are so preoccupied with Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows Server. But there will be an instance where there is a server or a system that uses Linux. So definitely find somewhere, something that you could add value to where it's not currently strong within the team. That's definitely a really good piece of advice that I would say to myself. Excuse me. And everybody else that's moving moving into town. The next big thing I would say would be to, if you've got a mentor, great. If you haven't, then it's going to be down to you just to ask questions and get familiar with the systems and the sort of network that you're dealing with. I would say you want to be asking at first what those reoccurring tickets are, what those reoccurring faults are that we see on a day-to-day -day basis or a weekly basis, um, and how do we resolve them? Just so you can quite quickly deal with something without needing the help of someone else if, it, if a common issue comes in. So definitely sort of learn the, the common sort of issues and faults that come in. Don't be hard on yourself. I think I've kind of touched with this on a lot of other things, but it's so easy to bring things back home and be down about something you didn't get right. Who cares? It, every day is a school day. Honestly, I if I get something wrong at work and it's not critical, like it's not critical for the clients, so what? I got something wrong. But you know what? Like having a good team, you pick that up and say, this is actually wrong. We need to be doing this. So don't lose sleep about something that's wrong. Um, and in IT and networking, the way that we get around that is we, we have lab environments anyway. So if you've got an idea about something, let's say a server, okay, there's a server that hosts a load of files or 
you know, a database on it for people and you want to make some changes to that or you've been asked to make some changes to it, well, why not just back up that server and put it on a virtual machine and play around with it there? Why not? Like, literally, why not? If it's not going to hurt anybody in a lab environment, don't be afraid to, 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 to try new things, innovate. So don't be constrained by, I can't do this, I can't do that. There are ways that you can learn. There are ways that you can do things. Um, ask the, the guys in your team, like I said, but don't be taking things back home that are like, oh, I just look so stupid because every day is a school day. Now, for me, um, I like I said, I started in tech here in Australia in 2025. I got the Cisco CCNA and CCST, and I'm now studying the DevNet, which is a bit of a different beast for me because there's a lot of new things in there that I'm not familiar with. So I am starting to get to a place now where I'm starting to get it and starting to enjoy it, and it's starting to click with me, but... The way that I do my certifications is sometimes in my work, I can grab an hour or two in the week, um, not like a two-hour block straight away, but maybe a half hour here, half hour there, 40 minutes here to read up and study on things that will benefit me on the team further on. And I look at DevNet for this. Uh, I come home and do the labs on the, on the virtual uh, emulation software that I have called Even G, and yeah, just I, I take I took my foot I've taken my foot off the gas a little bit compared to how I did CCNA because it wasn't sustainable in terms of how hard I was studying, but those incremental things that we do add up, add up, add up, add up. So I now do more studying each week, but less in total. So I'm just constantly ticking over doing the study and doing the studying, but I'm not beasting myself for like four or five hour sessions like I was last time. But hey, I just wanted to spread a bit of um, experience and advice on your first 90 days in tech. And remember, just survive them. You'll be fine.